ごめんなさいせっかくだけど私これいらないからいらないお二人はこの方の関係者ですかい,いえ家の前で倒れていたので救急車を呼んだんです身元は分からなくてそうですかでは付き添いで乗車はされませんかあんたは学校行っといでえでもこの方にはお母さんがついていくわあんたは今日面接の練習があるんでしょうんそれじゃあお母さんお願いえことがあってね。今日は家でおとなしくしておけばよかったんじゃないだって今日は面接の最後の練習があるからどうしても来たかったし何か起きないといいけどやだやめてよ何も起きないってあ思い出したえ天神症って言葉がちょっと引っかかってたんだけどさ
七不思議に出てくるんだよね天神症七不思議ってうちの学校に伝わる如月学園七不思議のことそうそう天神症って何放課後のよしえさんって言うんだけど聞いたことない知らない私も知らないよどんな話なのキサラギ学園が建てられる前にこの場所にあった天神小学校での話なんだけどさうんうんその天神小学校で放課後校舎の見回りをしていた女の先生が誤って階段から落ちて死んだんだってその日は10月のちょうど今日みたいに雨が降る放課後で時刻はそう夜の7時を過ぎたあたりこういう日はよしえさんが出るんだって天神小学校がなくなってしまったことに気づいていないよしえさんは如月学園の廊下を見回って歩いているんだよえっいややだそれ本当ええ<笑>まあ実際見たことがある人がいるから七不思議になってるんじゃないこわゆい今日はもう帰ったらそのおばあさんの言ってたことちょっと気になるしゆいだけ道が違うから一緒に帰れないじゃないだねお年寄りの忠告は聞いておくもんだよそうだねなんかゾワゾワしてきちゃったしもう帰ろうかなそれじゃあ先に帰るねバイバイバイバイ気をつけてね明日ファイトだよ、うん、私は慌てて荷物をまとめ教室を飛び出した時刻は夕方5時になるところ外は薄暗くなってきているけれど階段の7時までにはまだまだ余裕があっただから怖がる必要なんてないとそう自分に言い聞かせて廊下を進むそれでも下駄箱にたどり着くまでの時間がやけに長く感じられたあーダメだやっぱり怖い。よししどうつかさくん今は帰りかうんなんだよその満面の笑みは<笑>なんでもないね途中まで一緒に帰ろうよおああいいけどやった司くんの顔を見たら一瞬だけだけど怖かったのが吹き飛んだこういう時男の子ってすごく頼りになるなって思うそばにいてくれたら心強いなって無条件に思わせてくれるからもちろんそれが気になっている人ならなおさら雨は朝よりも弱まっていたその中を私たちは傘を差しながら歩く司くんとはたわいもない話でそこそこ笑ったりもしたけどでも私はどこかぎこちなかったかもしれない得体の知れない恐怖みたいなものがちらついていつもみたいに振る舞えている自信はなかったシシドんなんかお前顔色悪いぞ。どうかしたああおい実は
怖いことがあって怖いこと私の様子があまりにおかしかったのか司くんは心なしか表情をこわばらせて私を見つめた真剣に話を聞いてくれようとしているのが分かって私はちょっと嬉しくなる今抱えている恐怖をできることなら司くんと共有したかっただから私は今朝会ったこととカンナから聞いた怪談話を司くんに話しただけど司くんはあ,あ七不思議ねうん<笑>七不思議を信じるなんて夢があっていいなあえうんつかさくんは怖くないの怖いっていうか妙だとは思うけどなでもその謎のばあちゃんと七不思議なんて単なる偶然だろう気にしすぎだってでもあんま深く考えない方がいいんじゃね<笑>そのばあちゃんは確かに気味悪いけどさちょっと変わった人だっただけだろうそういうんじゃなくてえ解決方法を教えてほしかったわけじゃないよあのね、私は話を聞いてほしかっただけなのえ話なら聞いたじゃんかだからそうじゃなくてはあわかんねえよなんか怒ってんのか<笑>男の子ってこういう考え方をする人によるのかもしれないけどでも女子とは違ってすぐにこうすればいいじゃんって解決法を提示しちゃうのだ結果女子は言いたいことが言えなくて消化不良になってしまう私は司くんと恐怖を共有したかっただけ司くんが一緒に怖がってくれればそれでよかったのにこの時の私は気にするなって言葉が司くんの気遣いだとわからなかった面倒くさいのかなってむくれてしまったのだ朝に見たおばあさんの顔が目がしわがれた声が何度も頭の中でフラッシュバックするそれが怪談話で増幅されてじわじわと私の気持ちを暗くしたあんなに怖い思いをしたんだからっていう甘えや八つ当たりの気持ちもあったんだと思う私と司くんはこの時初めて気まずい雰囲気になったそれじゃ私こっちだからああシシドなんかあったら連絡しろよ<笑>ただいまゆいおかえりうんうん。今朝のおばあさんねうんさっき亡くなったって病院から連絡があったわ嘘残念なことだけどあなたは明日の推薦入試のことだけ考えていなさいうんそれじゃあのおばあさんの話はこれで終わり<笑>さあご飯にするから着替えておいで分かったそれじゃあ私部屋にいるから
ええお母さんがキッチンへと引っ込んでいくのを見届けて私はもぞもぞと靴を脱いだ気持ちは一層重くなっている司くんにあんな態度をとってしまっただけでも嫌な気分だったのにあのおばあちゃんが亡くなってしまっただなんて行くなー確か。明日は晴れるといいんだけど。Damn, I'm getting blown up right now. <laughs> I practiced the interview process with my teacher quite thoroughly, but I was still really nervous. That's my bad. I have my mic off, so yeah, that kind of sucked. There's still a little time before dinner. My mind swimming. I decided to take this opportunity to clean out all the notes and textbooks I wouldn't need for some or tomorrow from my bag. I'm giving you guys my inside voice. じゃあ、ペンケース。事件表も忘れずに入れて。それからペンケース。あれ嘘。ペンケースがない。ここに忘れてきちゃった。あ、don't go back. つかさくんからかりた受験必勝鉛筆が入っているのだ。とってこなくちゃ。お母さん、私ちょっと学校に忘れ物取りに行ってくる。え、もうすぐご飯できるわよ。すぐ戻るから。そう。雨も降っているし
こうなるのが分かっていて嫌だなもう階段なんてあんなの作り話だって込み上げてくる恐怖を抑えつけるために声を出して自分を叱咤する見上げた校舎に人影はないこんな時間なら生徒はもう帰宅しているだろうし先生だってどれくらい残っているのかけれど廊下の電気はまだ全てついていたあれだけ明るければそこまで怖い思いをしなくても教室まで行けるだろうよしパッと行ってパッと済ましちゃおう I pulled up my soaked umbrella and left it by the rack at the school entrance and changed into my indoor shoes and entering the brightly lit hall I took another look around やっぱり生徒は誰も残ってないみたい A deep sigh echoed through the deathly silent, or silent corridor. Ordinarily, the din of other students would drown out noises like this, but every little sound was coming through the crystal clear at this late hour. Oh shit. I quickly beelined towards classroom 3 4. その天神小学校で放課後校舎の見回りをしていた女の先生が誤って階段から落ちて死んだんだってその日は10月のちょうど今日みたいに雨が降る放課後で時刻はそう夜の7時を過ぎたあたりこういう日は吉江さんが出るんだって。天神小学校が亡くなってしまったことに気づいていないよしえさんは木更木学園の廊下を見回って歩いているんだよ。よ、ゆい、ゆうさっと出もう、何考えてるのよ、私。七不思議なんで。She's gotta go in, grab your pencil case, get out. It's not that hard, girl. Lightning flashed and thunder resounded with impeccable timing. I jumped in spite of myself. No ghost should show up in a well lit building like this, right? And even if they did, they wouldn't be very scary under all these bright lights. I picked up the pace as I continued to head straight to for room 3 4. I'm just curious. Before anything, why are schools open at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m.? Oh, what's up? それにしても今日はいつもよりこの廊下が長い感じがするただでさえこの廊下で遅刻しそうになるくらいなのに Why are high open past Man, I keep on saying that PM PM I continued the brisk walks down to impossibly long hallway towards my goal jumping every now and again whenever another thunderclap sounded Kisaragi Academy was comprised of both a middle school and a high school and this evening you really felt it was flaunting its massive size didn't help that my classroom was in the high school wing, which happened to be past the middle school, making it seem that much more farther away. I was focusing on the scant few sounds around me as I paced down that long, lonely corridor. Then, all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> I heard a faint noise as someone playing an organ. Oh sh! Oh sh! Oh Please tell me. I took a deep breath and trying to calm my nerves. Ah! Ah! Oh, please tell me this is not what I think it is. Man, Yui, you gotta. If it is what I think it is, Yui, you gotta dip right now. You gotta get out. 
you gotta get some dinner and just like go to your test you don't you don't need to be here <laughs> it was probably the sounds of the rain and wind and thunder mixing together it, so it just sounded like an organ that's all I was convinced I kept walking but then I heard the same noise again this time much more clearly it was unmistakable <laughs> I was paralyzed with fear. My heart was pounding as if they were struggling to break free of someone's sinister grip. Thinking about it, I vaguely recalled someone mentioning an upcoming performance by the Wind Instrument Club. I guess an organ would qualify. Somebody must have just stayed late to practice, that's all. I took another deep breath and tried again to calm my overly jittery nerves. I heard that if you let your imagination run too wild, fear can even make you see things that aren't there. And my imagination was most de definitely running wild. There you go, Yui. I decided to dash towards my classroom so I can get out of this hall as quickly as possible. There you go, Yui. Hey, finally reaching that familiar door, I swiftly opened it and flicked on the lights. Thanks to all my unexpected pauses to freak out, and th over thunder and lightning. It took me far longer than I should have to get here. It was already well past seven. It was the appointed time when the ghost of a teacher was supposed to appear, at least, according to the school legend. I let out a sigh of relief and relaxed my shoulders a bit. The lights were on both inside the classroom and out in the hallway. Sure, it was still dead silent, but the fear I've been feeling has completely melted away. I grabbed the pen case I come back for and shoved it into my pocket. With my long ordeal behind me, more or less, I looked around the classroom and let out another sigh. I only ever known this classroom when it was bustling with activity, and thus found its eerie silence and utter stillness to be oddly fascinating. I got the idea in my head to try doing something I normally wouldn't be able to do, like standing at the teacher's podium and writing on the blackboard. To me, the area behind that podium, from which teachers conduct their lessons, was like a sacred space. I dreamed of standing there myself one day, and could hardly resist its pull when presented with a rare opportunity like this. Oh, oh what's good, what's good, Kendrick? How was that persona's? To my classmates, this would seem like such a silly, stupid dilemma. But that didn't change the way I felt at this moment. Ah! <laughs> Don't give me a choice here. Alright, we got all the safe spots though, so we're good. Uh, you know, during my trip in NorCal, I was the CEO of Country Rule for about a good 10 seconds. So I want Yui to have that. I want Yui to have that, that taste too. I decided I had to try it. During daily cleanup and such, I'd come and gone from this spot countless times, but this was the first first time I ever had an opportunity to just stand here and preside over the classroom. Gaining a teacher's point of view, in the most literal sense, was starting to get me really fired up. It may seem silly now, but this was my stage. That's where all my dreams would play out. Oh no, for real though. CEO has, what, um, 76 entrants? And that's pre-reg too, so it's 
Man, I wish I could have gone. Man. Man. Anyway, back to. Ah, I began to imagine the future that awaited me, painstakingly detailing some new piece of knowledge for students sitting attentively at their desks, gliding chalk around across the board, filling it with information to aid them in their studies. I was getting so excited that even I began to think my behavior was a little strange. Maybe it was the juxtaposition of these joyous, freeing visions and the prickling dread I'd been feeling up just a minute or two before. And then, in the blink of an eye, one of these two conflicting emotions completely overpowered the other. Wow! Oh yeah, but it's gonna be... It's gonna be a good tournament to watch, no less. Uh, I mean, the brackets are gonna be out... Wednesday? I might just do like a small stream just to like explore the brackets. But... This is what you get. Suddenly, my surroundings were bathed in darkness. Going stiff with shock, I stumbled back a step. My back struck the blackboard with a dull thud. I instinctively grabbed a hold of the rail where the racer sat, felt chalk dust against my fingertips. My panic heartbeat was making it difficult to breathe. Was this caused by the thunderstorm? If so, it sure picked a fine time to turn the lights out on me. Was this what the old woman was trying to warn me about? That is, that's impossible. She was no fortune teller or psychic. As far as I was aware, how could she possibly known this would happen? Hell, even if she, she were a fortune teller or a psychic, predicting the future is the stuff of science fiction, I shook my head. I curled my chalk dusted fingers into a fist and silently tried to talk some sense to myself. I shouldn't have been playing teacher. I should have been in and out by now. Cursing myself a little, I fumbled my way through the darkened classroom. I spent so, time, so much time in here, you'd think I'd be able to find my way out with my eyes closed, as it were. But sadly, that wasn't the case. Smashing loudly into a desk, I knocked it on its side and began tumbling after it, instinctively grabbing at the other desk for support. Man, Yui. Yui, just, just leave it. Just leave it, girl. Still fumbling around blindly, I gathered up all the scattered notes, textbooks, and writing utensils. I let out a sigh. I seem to be doing a lot, that a lot lately. I was trying to take inventory of all the things I knocked out onto the desk and realize why. I might as well just stand it up and stuff it all back in. Not that it was a particularly pl uh, pleasant prospect. Eh. Explaining what I've done wouldn't be easy, and no matter how I sugarcoated it, it would serve as a clear indication of my clumsiness. Uh, if I didn't say anything, it's not like I'd be found out. But that would be the same as lying, as far as I'm concerned, and I couldn't do that. You meant all you did was just knock over a desk? I don't think you'd be that tight. Check your pockets. I placed my hand around against the floor and swept around, feeling for anything I might have missed, and I found something all right. I clearly brushed my fingers across something. I had no idea what it what. It was no notebook or writing implement, though. That's for sure. Maybe it's been on the floor all along. I rubbed my sticky fingertips a bit deeper into the wet spot and brought my hand up close to my face so I could get a better look at what it was there. What on earth did I touch? 
There is a flash of lightning almost immediately joined by a roaring thunderclap, and with it, for a split second, the pitch black classrooms lit up bright as day. See? I shot to my seat, utterly mortified. In that split second, I got in a very good look at my fingers, and it really did seem as they were covered in blood. But it wasn't just my hand, no, if my peripheral vision was to be trusted. It looked like the entire room was stained a deep, dark crimson. So, Without thinking, I backed away from where I'd been crouching. I tried rationalizing what I saw. How could a whole classroom be a bloodbath like this? Did something spill? Did someone stumble and you're injured? My whole body was quaking. I fled from the classroom. Or rather, I tried to flee. Is this what they call by changing fate? They're literally going through every single one of my favorite characters. <laughs> oh man. I pulled out on the door handle again and again in a frenzy. I kept I was pulling so hard, it felt like my fingernails might tear loose. But it just wouldn't budge. I was absentmindedly grinding, grabbing at my hair with one hand and slammed my fist on a nearby desk with the other. This was a nightmare. <laughs> Silence saturated the inky blackness of the room. It took several deep breaths in an effort to restrain my pounding heart. <laughs> Come on girl, you're a teacher. You're a teacher, you can do it. I was certain that when I saw what it actually was came morning, it ended up being something totally random, like someone's old soda stained gym clothes. My imagination was just running wild because I was panicking. I decided to check out the hypothesis by feeling my way across the door and determining if anything was jutting out of any of the cracks. I mean, you had a cell phone, right? You just gotta use that, like, that dim cell phone light. I fumbled across the gaps in the door, but I just couldn't make anything out that way. No, this was the third floor. I couldn't get out here without exiting into the hallway. Still at a loss, I noticed a sudden flash of light through the hallway window. But the glass was only translucent, so I couldn't be sure of its source. And there came the distinctive clomp, clomp, clomp of footsteps. I recalled the existence of a custodian who always patrolled the school grounds. I'm sure he was probably taking a look after the sudden power outage. <laughs> All at once, my fear addled legs regained their strength. This nightmare will soon be over. <laughs> I shouted to the custodian at the top of my lungs through the window. <laughs> I had to be sure he heard me. I shouted again. Finally, I could see the light out in the hallway again. It seemed to be getting closer. However, <laughs> perturbed, I took a step away from the window. <laughs> like the faint, unearthly glow classically attributed to spirits, what was I thinking? What was I, ah, was what I was thinking, man. Tongue tied. I tried to stop myself from finishing that thought, however. Dullness aside, it also looked like it was wriggling around in a very unnatural, very unflash like like way. Clomp, 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 clomp. Four clumps. 
then a three second or so interval, then another four clumps. Clump, clump, clump. They were sounding in a fixed rhythm. The fear was back in full force. I had to find somewhere to hide. Hold the hell up. Today, yesterday, 10 10. What if I accidentally summoned something inhuman? I mean, whatever that was, I begged it for help. I literally invited it in. Supply locker, teacher's. Why would I hide in the teacher's podium? What the hell? Uh... Yeah, supply locker. I hurriedly squeezed myself into the metal locker where the classroom cleaning supplies were kept. It was still pitch black in the room, so I really couldn't spare the time it would take to remove the content. Instead, I just contorted myself to fit. <coughs> the locker was thick with the smells of mold and varnish. So I waited. I waited for the footsteps to pass by and fade into the distance, signaling that it was safe to emerge. Still, it felt a lot safer in the locker room than it did out in the room, but the footsteps weren't receding, they were just getting louder, closer, faster. I don't even need to do that. That's doing everything perfect. And then it came to a sudden halt. Ara? We were close, just outside the locker. I peered through the ventilation holes. I missed the utter darkness of the classroom. There wasn't a soul to be seen. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not sure why I believed that. Maybe because I needed to. Maybe because it was so dark, because I felt so much calmer in a tight space, but nothing could possibly sneak up behind me. Oh, you, you fucked up, Yui. You, oh, man. You fucked up, I think, in that. I didn't know why, and I didn't care. I just knew that as far as I was concerned, I was safe in here. So I stood motionless, cramped, and I waited. I didn't have to wait long. <laughs> Suddenly apprehensive, I gingerly nudged the supply closet door just to make sure it wouldn't still open when I wanted it to. Ooh. I let out a sudden yelp at this unknown voice and tried with all my might to push open the door blocking my escape. There was a brief moment of silence following the eerie voice, its unsettling proclamation, and then a crash and crunch the metal walls around me on all four sides began warping inward as a supply locker has somehow been fed into a trash compactor. There's no force I could imagine that should be able to do this, but it was happening. This already confined space was steadily closing in on me. <laughs> Crash, crunch, the collapse of the locker all around me continued. Slowly and steadily, I could feel all manner of things pushing and cutting to my body. My vision went bright red. One of the blood vessels in my eyes probably burst from the pressure. I wasn't going to last much longer. The ventilation holes in the locker door were now pressed right up against my face, and through them I could barely make out a figure of a person. It was an old woman from this morning. She was standing right outside the slats, staring right into my eyes. <coughs> Yo, bruh! It was the last sight I would ever see as the locker finally, inevitably, smashed into my school. Crash, crunch, crack. Splat. <laughs> da -na -na. Okay, I'll tell you one thing, it wasn't as gross as any of the wrong ends in the first game. I'll tell you that much. It's easy to like listen 
to that. See, and that's why we save kids. That's why this game gave me 60 save spot. <laughs> hey man, you got, you got Twitch delay. And plus, yeah. Okay, we'll go to the teacher's podium. I hurriedly presented myself beneath the teacher's podium. I grabbed my knees, curled up, and made myself as small as I could. The footsteps continued to draw nearer and nearer. Clomp, 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 clomp. Little by little, the sound grew louder. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I held my breath, clasped my hands together, and silently prayed. Clomp, 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 clomp. They were close now. Very, very close. Why was this happening? I couldn't make any sense of it. I just wanted it to be over. I prayed to God that it would end. Was this about the old woman was trying to warn me about? Was this all happening because I ignored her? Because I didn't take the paper doll from her? Yes! You should have done it! You should have done- Well, no, actually, no. Nah. If the paper doll was like the Sachiko charm, I would have been like, nah. Was it because I heard the ghost story of Yoshi and allowed it to get to me? Or did the strange events of the day have nothing to do with what was happening to me now? I was still holding my breath. I didn't dare let even the tiniest of sounds escape to give away my position. Tap, 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 tap. The consistent rhythm of the footsteps suddenly ended halfway into one of its cycles. And it ended right in front of this very classroom. Spooky. I had goosebumps up and down my arms and legs, like I have right now. God damn. I stopped praying and clasped my hands over my mouth. I knew I'd scream if I didn't. Could this be Yoshi? Was the school legend real? Yeah, see. You breathe in, breathe out. All I could do was close my eyes, keep my mouth shut, and hope whoever or whatever this was would just go away. But the footsteps sounds didn't start again. If this was indeed Yoshi, then she stopped in front of this classroom and was just standing there. I had no concept of time anymore. I stayed in my hiding spot for what was probably only a few minutes, but it felt like at least an hour. You should have dipped, girl. I decided to carefully peek out from under the podium. I genuinely edged my head just far enough to get a glimpse of the room when suddenly the footsteps rang out once more. It sounded like they were heading right for me and they might have been inside the room. I honestly couldn't tell. I scrambled back into my hiding spot and covered my mouth with both hands. Yo, you know what? This changing fate, this changing fate thing is kind of, kind of outplayed. I mean, can't we, can't we just like stick to the old story? Like, I mean, I was, I was fine with the old story. Like, <laughs> this, this is a little overrated trying to change my fate. I mean, it already happened, right? Might as well like work like with it. This was too much for me. My breathing was coarse and erratic and my face was a mess of tears and snot. I was inconsolable. The footsteps just wouldn't stop. What on earth were they doing? They almost seemed like they were running around in circles, just to scare me. I mouthed these words over and over again, and my mouth moved my hands to my ears in a vain attempt to block out this torturous sound. As if in response, the sound changed. It was a loud, dull thud, followed by silence. No more footsteps. I heard that sounds hundreds of times before. It was a classroom door sliding open. I peeked out, but the door was still tight, tight, or still tightly shut. How could that be? If the sound I heard wasn't the door, then what was it? <laughs> what little safety I felt here was pretty much gone. But to be fair, I wasn't absolutely certain that the spirit had seen or heard me e either. The prospect of stepping out into the open wasn't a desirable one, but I had to decide if it was better to stay where I was or make to make a break for it. 
Huh. Okay, so we gotta think. Of, we gotta think about this. So if we stay hidden, we're not gonna leave. <laughs> when we make a break for it, we're gonna get fucked up. No, no spoiler, but, huh, I mean, if I stayed hidden, I, I, like, every fiber in my being is telling me to make a break for it, though, that's the thing, but I could stay safe. I could be safe, because the door isn't open. If the door was open, I would have been, like, hella sure to just, like, bolt. Uh... Yeah. I'm gonna get hit overhead, huh? Here. Here, I'm gonna block high. But it only took a moment for that decision to come back and bite me. My body was suddenly weighed down in this instant without knowing what was happening. My feely position form was essentially locked in place. It was like a boulder spotted on top of me was resting on my arched back. I twisted and shuffled myself around, trying to shake it off, but the more I struggled, the heavier it became. What's more, it felt like it was slowly inching its way towards my head, as if it was planning on dropping it down in front of my face. Was this a person? <laughs> it was a female voice, reverberating ominously, as bubbling from the depths of hell. <laughs> I squirmed violently, desperate to throw off, off of me. <laughs> Did I get hit low? <laughs> Did I really just get hit low? <laughs> I got hit low. Man. My vision went red, or at least it felt that way. Where was on my back and dug her major sharp fingernails right into my eyes. I collapsed <laughs> on the spot. The pain was instantaneous and unbearable. I could no longer hold my position. I could no longer focus on anything but this agony. Yeah, you're a bad teacher. The pain, the pain shot through my heads in waves. It was indescribable, unthinkable. I couldn't take it any longer. My consciousness faded, and I was gone. I would never know exactly what has happened to me, but maybe I was better off that way. Man, did I really just get hit low? I got hit low. Man, of all the times I decided to block high, I get hit low. Man. <laughs> Damn it. You you aim low. You just, you just empty jump low. You do you spend the bar? You spend the bar just to hit me low. It doesn't matter how many Here, run. Staying in one place for too long seemed like it would in be inviting trouble, so I took a deep breath and reluctantly crawled out as quietly as I could, but almost immediately I felt something. Tap. <laughs> something long and thin it struck me in the back of the head. Or perhaps struck isn't the right word. There was a little force behind it, but it wasn't a hard slam. More like someone trying to get my attention. <laughs> I knew I wouldn't like what I was going to see, so I had to face whatever this was. So, I turned around. And there, looming over me was... Yeah, dip, girl! 
A figure was peering down at me from above the podium, with one emancipated, wishbone-like finger extended towards my face. I recognized this person instantly, no doubt about it. It was the strange old woman who supposedly passed away or it. I was scared out of my mind. I tumbled the rest of the way out from under the podium and shot to my feet. A ghost? There really was a ghost in the school. My breathing was so ragged and my heart was pounding so hard I thought it might explode. Plowing through all the desks in my way, I ran as fast as I could towards the classroom door, but that was far as I could go. There, in the open doorway, was the same old woman emitting a bluish white glow. This was the source of the light I seen through the window earlier. But how in the world did she get to the door before I did? <laughs> I felt like I was staring to hyperventilate, and I tried my best as I could to calm my breathing as my eyes darted about the room. I needed to get out of the air as now to get as far away from this place as I possibly could. Yo, it's time. You gotta activate. I bit my lip and continued scanning the room. 